Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the Corp Maths practice questions on kinematics or the formulae or equations of motion. If you need any extra help on this topic, if you go to Corp Maths and go to the videos and worksheet section and scroll down to video number 299A, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on kinematics. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, question number one. Question number one says the car is traveling with a velocity of 10 meters per second, and then the car accelerates at 4 meters per second squared for 3 seconds. Use the formula V equals U plus AT to find the velocity of the car after 3 seconds. Okay, so in terms of this information, we're told it's acceleration. We know that A is equal to 4 meters per second squared. We know the initial velocity, and remember initial velocity is U, so U is equal to 10 meters per second, so 10 meters per second. So we've got A and we've got U, and we've also got time, the time's 3 seconds, time is equal to 3, or 3 seconds. So we've got T, we've got A, and we've got U, and we want to find the velocity of the car after the 3 seconds, in other words, the final velocity, which is V. So we can just substitute these into the formula. So we've got V is equal to U, which is 10, plus A, which is 4, multiplied by T, which is 3. So we've got the velocity is equal to 10 plus 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12, so we've got V is equal to 10 plus 12, just working out what 4 times 3 was. And then we've got 10 plus 12, and 10 plus 12 is 22. So V, the final velocity of the car, is 22 meters per second. So the final velocity of the car after 3 seconds is 22 meters per second. So V is 22, and that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question, question number two. So question number two says, a boy is cycling with a velocity of two meters per second. So he's cycling at that velocity, so that's his initial velocity, u. He then accelerates to 1.5 meters per second squared for 10 seconds. So we've got a here, the acceleration and the time. And we've been asked to use the formula v equals u plus at to find his final velocity. So we've got the initial velocity, so that's u. We've got his acceleration, a, and we've got the time taken, t. So we know that v is equal to u plus a. A T. So V, his final velocity, will be equal to U, his initial velocity, 2, plus his acceleration, 1.5, so 1.5, multiplied by T, time, which is 10, so multiplied by 10. So we've got the velocity, V is equal to 2, plus 1.5 times 10. So 1.5 times 10 will be 15, so we've got the V is equal to 2 plus 15, because 1.5 times 10 is 15, and then 2 plus 15 is 17, so V is equal to 17 meters per second. And that's it, we found V. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number three. So question number three, it's a calculator question, so we can use a calculator. And we're told that the train starts from rest, and that's quite important, from rest. So the train starts from rest, that means the train isn't moving to begin with. So that means that U, the initial velocity, is equal to zero. And it accelerates at 0.2 meters per second squared for one minute. So we've got the acceleration, A is equal to 0.2 meters per second squared. And we've got time, one minute, one minute is 60 seconds. Remember the acceleration is given in seconds, so we're going to work in seconds. So one minute, the time is equal to 60 seconds. So we've got U, we've got A, and we've got T. And we've been asked to find the velocity of the train after one minute, so the final velocity after that minute. So V is equal to U plus AT. So that's V is equal to U, the initial velocity, because it's at rest, that's zero, plus A, that is 0 0.2, multiplied by T, which is the time, 60. So now we just need to work this out. As a calculator question, so you could just type in 0 plus 0 0.2 times 60 into your calculator, and that'll give you, well, 0 0.2 times 60 is 12, and 0 plus 12 is 12, so that's velocity is equal to 12 meters per second, and that's it. So after one minute, the train will be traveling at 12 meters per second. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four said, a cart accelerates at two meters per second squared, so we've got the acceleration, for seven seconds, so we've got time, and its velocity after the seven seconds, so that's the final velocity, V, is equal to 20 meters per second. And we've been asked to use the formula V equals U plus AT to find the initial velocity of the cart. So we wanna find U in this case. So V, the final velocity, is 20. We've got that A, the acceleration, is two meters per second squared. And we've got time, the time is seven seconds. So we've got V, A, and T, and we wanna find U. So let's substitute these values into the formula. So V, that's 20, is equal to U, that's U, plus A, A is equal to two, multiplied by T, which is seven. 
So we've got the 20 is equal to u plus 2 times 7. Now some people would rearrange this formula to make u the subject, and you can do that if you want to. I tend to just substitute in the values and then rearrange it. So here we've got 20 is equal to u, and then we've got plus, and 2 times 7 is 14, so that's 14. And now we want the u on its own, so let's take away 14 from both sides. So let's take away 14 and take away 14, and we get that 6 is equal to u. So u is equal to 6 meters per second. So the initial velocity of the cart is 6. So that's 6 meters per second, and that's it. So in this question, we were told the final velocity, the acceleration, and the time. We substitute them into the formula, and then we just worked it out, and we found out what u was. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 5. Okay, so question number 5 is a calculator question, and we've been asked to use the formula v is equal to u plus at to find the acceleration, so we want to find the acceleration, when the initial velocity is equal to 7 meters per second, so that's u, that the time is equal to 12 seconds, that's time, and the final velocity v is equal to 16 meters per second. So let's substitute these values in. So we've got v, so v is equal to u plus at. v, that's equal to the final velocity, which is 16, so 16, is equal to u, the initial velocity, which is 7, plus the acceleration, which we're trying to find, so it's a, multiplied by t, and the time is equal to 12. So we've got 16 equals 7 plus a multiplied by 12. So if we then work this out, a times 12 will be 12a, so that's going to be 16 is equal to 7 plus 12a. And now we want to solve this equation, so let's take away 7 from both sides, so take away 7 from the left hand side, and 7 from the right hand side. 16 take away 7, that's equal to 9, so we've got 9 on the left hand side, and on the right hand side we took away the 7 to get rid of the 7, so we're just left with 12a. Now we want to find out what a is, so we're going to divide by 12 and divide by 12 to find out what a is. 9 divided by 12 is equal to 0 0.75, or 3 quarters, and that's equal to a. So a, the acceleration, would be 0 0.75 meters per second squared. And that's it, so a is 0 0.75. So let's write that down. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number six. So question number six, we've been told that v is equal to u plus at, so we've used that in all the questions so far. There are other formulae that we're going to be using as well, and they're mentioned later on in this booklet. So we've got v is equal to u plus at, u is equal to six, so we've got, let's write this down, v is equal to u plus at. We're trying to find v, so v equals u, which is six, plus a, which is 2.4, multiplied by t, which is 20. And then if we work this out, v is equal to 6 plus, and 2.4 times 20, that's 48, so 48. And then if we work out this addition, v is equal to 6 plus 48 is 54. So that means the v is equal to 54, and that's it, we've worked that out. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question, question number 7. So question number 7 says, a ball is dropped from the top of a building and reaches the ground after 3 seconds. And we're told that S is the distance travelled by the ball in metres, and that T is the time taken in seconds. And we've been asked to work out the height that the ball was dropped from. Okay, so the height the ball was dropped on will be the distance it travels in the 3 seconds, because whenever it's released from the top of the building, it takes 3 seconds to reach the ground. So the distance travelled will be the height of the building. So let's work out S, the distance travelled, because the distance travelled will be the height the ball was dropped from. So we know that T is equal to 3, the time taken was 3 seconds. So we know that S, the distance travelled, is equal to 5 multiplied by T squared, so that's going to be 3 squared. And it's a calculator question, so you could type this into your calculator. I'm just going to work it out because it's quite straightforward. We've got 5 multiplied by 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, so it's 5 times 9. So that's equal to 45. So it means the S is equal to 45. That means the distance travelled by the ball was 45 metres. And if the distance travelled by the ball was 45 metres, the height the ball was dropped from was 45 metres. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 8. So question number eight, we're told to use the formula v equals u plus at to find the time taken when the initial velocity is 24 meters per second, the final velocity is 2 meters per second, and the acceleration is negative 5 meters per second squared, so it's slowing down, so it's decelerating. So we've got the initial velocity, that's u, we've got the final velocity, v, and we know the acceleration, a. So we've got the v is equal to u plus at. v, the final velocity, that's going to be equal to to 2, so we've got 2 is equal to u, which is 24, plus, and then we've got a times t. a is equal to negative 5, so we've got negative 5 times t. And then let's simplify this a bit, so we've got negative 5 times t, that's going to be minus 5t, so we've got that 2 is equal to 24, and then we've got minus 5t, and if we're adding minus 5t, that's just the same as taking away 5t, so we've just got minus 5t there. 
Now we want to solve this equation, so we want to get the t on its own. So if I had an equation like this, the first thing I'd want to do is I want to make the minus 5t positive. So I'm going to add 5t to both sides here. If I add 5t to the left hand side and add 5t to the right hand side, that'll get rid of this minus 5t. So the left hand side would become 2 plus 5t. And on the right hand side, we're adding 5t to get rid of the minus 5t, so we'll just be left with 24. Now we want to find out what t is, so let's get rid of this 2, so we're adding 2 here, let's get rid of that, so let's take away 2 and take away 2. So on the left hand side we'll just be left with 5t because we're taking away this 2. And on the right hand side we've got 24, take away 2, that's going to be 22. And now we've got 5 times t is 22, we just need to divide by 5 and divide by 5 and we'll find out what t is. And 22 divided by 5 is, e is equal to 4.4. And it's a calculator question, we could just do 22 divided by 5 and that's equal to 4.4. So the time taken is 4.4 seconds. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question. So question number nine, we're told that v equals u plus at. We're told that v is equal to 8, a is equal to negative 7, and t is equal to 2.5. And we've been asked to work out the value of u. So let's substitute these values in. So here we've got v, that's equal to 8. So we've got 8 is equal to u. Well, we're trying to find the value of u, so that's still u, plus a times t. a is negative 7, because it's negative 7. And then t is equal to 2.5, so times 2.5. So we've got the 8's equal to u plus negative 7 times 2.5. So let's work out what negative 7 times 2.5 is. So it's a calculator question, negative 7 times 2.5 is equal to negative 17.5. So we've got the 8 is equal to u. And then instead of writing plus minus 17.5, I'm just going to write minus 17.5. And now we want to find out what u is, so let's add 17.5 and add 17.5 to both sides of that equation. So 8 plus 17.5 would, would be equal to 25.5. And on the right hand side, we had u minus 17.5, we're adding 17.5, so just be left with u. So the value of u would be 25.5. And that's it, so that's the value of u. Okay, question number 10. So question number 10, we've got that s equals ut plus a half at squared. And we're told that u is equal to 0, t is equal to 4, and a is equal to 5. And we've been asked to work out the value of s. So let's substitute these values in and see what we get. So we've got s, that's what we're trying to find. So s is equal to ut, so it's going to be 0 times 4. So 0 times 4, that's u times t, plus a half. And then we've got a, which is equal to 5. So 5. And then multiply by t squared, so it's multiplied by 4 squared. So just to recap, we had s equals ut plus a half at squared. We replaced the u with 0, the t with 4, the half is there, the a's are being replaced by 5, and the t squared, we've got 4 squared there, and that's it. So here we've got 0 times 4, that's going to be 0, and we've got our 4 squared. Remember, our order of operations, we need to really square first, so 4 squared is 16. So we've got s is equal to 0 times 4 plus a half times 5 times 16, because 4 squared is 16. Now 0 times 4 is just 0, so we've got s is equal to 0 plus, and then we've got a half, and then we've got 5 times 16, and 5 times 16 is 80, so that's 80. So we've got s is equal to 0 plus a half of 80, and a half of 80 is 40. So s is equal to 40, and that's it, that's the value of s. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11 says that v squared equals u squared plus 2as, and we know that u is equal to 3, a is equal to 2, and s is equal to 40. And we've been asked to work out a value of v. So let's substitute these values into the formula and see what we get. So v squared, that's going to be v squared, equals u squared, that's 3 squared, plus 2 times a, which is 2, times s, which is 40. 2 times 2 times 40, that's equal to 160, and 3 squared is 9, so we've got the v squared equals 9 plus 160. And if we add these together, we'll get the v squared equals 169. Now v squared is equal to 169, so if we do the square root of 169, that's equal to 13. So v could be 13, because 13 squared is 169, but it could also be negative 13, because negative 13 times negative 13 is also equal to 169. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive as well. So it means that v is equal to plus or minus 13. So we've been asked to work out a value of v, v is equal to 13 or negative 13. Now this is our value, so if you wrote down 13 or negative 13, either one of those is fine. Um, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 12. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12 says s equals ut plus a half at squared. And we're told that u is equal to 8, and t is equal to 3, and a is equal to 10. 
and we've been asked to work out the value of s. So let's substitute these values in. So we've got the s equals ut, that's going to be 8 times 3, so 8 times 3, plus a half of a t squared, so a is 10, so a half of 10, multiplied by t squared, so that's times by 3 squared. So that's replacing the u with 8, the t with 3, the a with 10, and the t with 3. Okay, now let's work this out. That's a calculator question. You could just type this into your calculator in one go, or we could work it out. 8 times 3 is 24, plus, and then we've got a half of 10, and then we've got our 3 squared, that's 9, so times by 9. 10 times 9 is 90, so we've got 24 plus a half of 90. A half of 90 is 45, so that's 24 plus 45. And then if we add these together, we get that's equal to 69. So it means the S is equal to 69. And that's it. Now you could in this question as a calculator question, write this down and then just work it out in your calculator. But I've worked it out step by step. And that's it. The answer is 69. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 13. So question number 13, we've got the V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And we've got the values of V, a and s and we've been asked to work out a value of u so we want to work out a value of u so v squared that's going to be 20 squared plus u squared that's still u squared plus 2 times a so that's 2 times a which is 7 times s which is 26 so we've got 20 squared equals u squared plus 2 times 7 times 26 and then if we work this out 20 squared is 400 so we've got 400 equals u squared and then plus and then 2 times 7 times 26 is equal to 364 Okay, now we want to solve this, so we want to work out what u is, so let's take away 364 from both sides. So on the left-hand side, we have, so we'd have 400, take away 364, that's 36. And on the right-hand side, we've just got u squared. So we've got the u squared equals 36. And then if we want to solve that, the square root of 36 is equal to 6. That means that u would be equal to 6 or negative 6, because remember that negative 6 times negative 6 would also be 36. And the question says to work out a value of u, so, so if you wrote down u is equal to 6 or negative 6, that's fine, and you've worked out a value of u. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14, we've been asked to make a the subject of v equals u plus at, so we want to make a the subject. So if we want to make a the subject, we want to get the a on its own. So let's get rid of this u, because we're adding u here, so let's take away u and take away u. So v take away u, that's going to be v subtract u. And on the right hand side, with u plus at, we're taking away the u to get rid of the u, so we'll just be left with a times t. Now, we want to like find out what a is, we want to make a the subject, so let's get rid of this multiply by t. So if we want to get rid of this multiply by t, we're going to divide by t and divide by t. So on the left hand side, we're going to have v subtract u divided by t. On the right hand side, we're just going to be left with a. So a is equal to v subtract u over t. And that's it, we've made a the subject. And that's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions, the court maths practice questions on kinematics or those formulae or equations of motion. If you need any extra help on this topic, if you go to court maths, there's a video tutorial under, if you go to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video number 299A, there's a video there. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But in this video, we focus on the video solutions, the practice questions. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.